Hello, my name is Sergio La Torre. I'm a San Francisco based artist. I'm also a professor at the University of San Francisco Art and Architecture Department. Hello, my name is Chris Jari. I'm an artist living in Oakland, California. Um, I teach at California College of the Arts and I consider myself a social practice artist or a community engaged artist. Uh, we started working on this project, the Sanctuary City project in 2008. It was an installation uh, that was done at a local gallery in San Francisco. And uh, in 2017, nine years later, we were invited by the Rabona Center for the Arts to continue working on the project. This time the project became a functional print shop. Yeah, as Sergio was saying, the print shop was a manifestation of the project that allowed people to participate with the, um, directly with the content of immigration and sanctuary cities. Um, on the wall of the museum space, we had a timeline based on the research that we've been doing for the past 12 years, um, going down anywhere from federal policy, um, city policy, to deportation numbers, uh, and also to raids, raids in the area. Uh, the Bay Area had seen uh, numerous raids uh, over the years, and so we were charting those as well. Uh, people engaged with the research, and then from there, they answered uh, some prompted questions that we had. Um, what would you tell an immigrant? Uh, do you know anybody that's been deported? Um, and people would silk screen these questions, and then they would answer the questions. They would answer our prompts. And from those answers, Sergio and I have made a series of uh, posters out of those. Um, so various, various responses. We turned those into 10 original posters, and people got to silk screen the posters and take them away with them. They could put it up in their house, they could put it up in their community, wherever they wanted to put them. So the idea was to learn from the research, to take in the research, and then to start conversation with, with our participants, um, and then have them respond and make a poster. So it was very interactive, um, you know, very, uh, very participatory, as I said, and it was a successful, a successful show for us. And that kind of propelled us to where we are now. Like Chris was saying before, the, uh, the phrases, the responses from the audience became posters. Uh, those posters, they became billboards and banners and tote bags. And the idea is to expand these voices the idea is to expand a pro-immigration uh, project uh, into the public. We have done several iterations of this uh, project uh, around the, uh, the, the West Coast, from San Diego or from Tijuana, all the way to Seattle. Um, we work with galleries, museums, but also with uh, nonprofits, schools, from uh, elementary, middle, high school, all the way to college. Uh, we have engaged with uh, different publics in different locations, and that's precisely what moves this project. That's what keeps this uh, project going, how we interact with, with others uh, dealing with immigration issues. Yeah, as Sergio was saying, um, the project is about connecting with people um, and connecting through conversation and connecting through our experiences. Um, and one way we do that in the public is we utilize uh, bicycles. And so uh, Sergio and I have converted uh, uh, bicycles into printma uh, printmaking carts, excuse me. <clears throat> These carts are um, real simple for us. We drive into space, we pop up, and we start printing in public space. Um, it's been a very successful tool for us. It's been a successful tool to, to reach audiences that maybe we couldn't reach inside of a museum or a gallery space, and uh, makes for um, interesting interactions, both positive and negative. Um, we've definitely run into some situations that, we've, that people don't believe exactly what we're saying, and so it leads to some interesting conversations and uh, opens up the door to sharing the research that uh, Sergio and I feel is extremely important. Early last year, 2019, we got invited to come to MCLA to uh, present the Sanctuary City print shop. Um, and then COVID happened. As you can imagine, uh, public interactions are uh, nearly impossible nowadays. Uh, our project is very physical. It demands a lot of uh, physicality. Uh, holding screens, uh, you know, making the posters, holding a squeegee, talking to people uh, very, very, in a very uh, close environment. So, uh, 
for MCLA, we had to completely uh, uh, reshape the project. What we do in our, uh, MCLA is a, a, a different iteration of uh, what happened in uh, San Francisco, San Diego, or Seattle. We are uh, still engaging with the public uh, in a very different way right now. We are having um, um, uh, to produce a series of billboards, banners, and uh, newspapers, ad, and postcards with uh, two uh, uh, questions. One question that we ask is, when did you forget you were an immigrant? And the other question is, uh, what will you tell an immigrant? Um, we hope that uh, people will respond either by phone call or by uh, texting, uh, letting us know their feelings about immigration in Massachusetts. Uh, uh, um, these responses will become part of the archive. Uh, the archive right now consists of 30, 35 uh, responses. Uh, these responses, like Chris mentioned earlier, are uh, responses from the public from San Diego, San Francisco, and Seattle. We have received around 1,500 responses. And out of those responses, we selected 35 only. So hopefully we'll get more responses from the uh, Massachusetts project and uh, create or increase the archive. So as Sergio mentioned, we're doing a series of billboards and uh, banners as well. Um, it will also be in a gallery show at MCLA as well. So we're going to have our timeline there that it's now turned into a digital timeline where we're looking at um, different sorts of uh, information based on immigration and sanctuary city policy. Um, and we're also gonna have um, a representation of some of our posters and some vinyl work. So we're gonna fill the gallery with people's responses and uh, share what we've, been f f what we've heard um, from MCLA and the public. Um, you guys are crucial in this whole process. Uh, as Sergio said, it's very participatory. It's a different way. During COVID, we've had to change our ways. And so what we're thinking about now is this call and response. Call us, leave a message, on the, leave a message up from the prompt that we give you, and um, we'll take those and we'll, we'll you know, maybe choose a couple to turn into posters and banners and billboards, things of that nature. The two questions that we are asking you to respond to come from the uh, original research. Um, what will you tell an immigrant? It's one of the questions that we ask people that came to the galleries in San Francisco and San Diego and Seattle. Um, and when did you forget you were an immigrant came out of uh, different conversations uh, during, during these uh, this, uh, events. Uh, people in this country have forgotten that uh, most of us, most of us Americans are from somewhere else. Our ancestors came from somewhere else or we came from somewhere else. And we forgot that. Uh, 100 years ago, uh, you know, the Polish, the Irish, Italian were not considered white. They were the ones, they were the scapegoats. Uh, 100 years later, we have uh, uh, Arabs and Latinos, Latinas, uh, Asians that are the new, the new scapegoat. Uh, our experience is not really that unique. It happened before. And uh, if people remember the fact that there is some immigration uh, uh, stories in their lives, uh, probably we wouldn't have the problems that we're having right now with uh, the travel ban and, and uh, the uh, family separations, the ICE raids, you know, the, uh, the, this new border that uh, is being built as we speak. So those two questions are designed for that, for, for, uh, for you to understand that, that, your, that, that your story uh, can and should be shared in order to create some empathy towards uh, immigration. Your stories and your experiences are crucial for this project, and we really appreciate you taking the time to answer these two questions. Um, think about it. You know, don't don't come up with the first thing you think of. Just kind of think, let it sit in your mind, 
Um, maybe ask a family member, maybe talk to a friend, but um, you know, really, really let it set, set in and think about a response that you'd like to give to us over the phone into the message.